Todd Kapser. Powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Russ Riesinger. And I'm Janelle Slade. Three major crashes on Billing Streets within the last 20 hours, claiming two lives. Well, tonight, police are asking for your help in tracking down another motorcyclist who may have been involved in the first crash that killed a 20-year-old Billings man last night. Now, more details on that in just a moment. But first, right now, crews are working to remove a pickup truck from the inside of a Billings Heights business. A rush hour traffic snarled on Main Street in the Heights after this truck barreled into this tattoo business on 643 Main Street. Happened right around 4 o'clock this afternoon. First responders are on scene, but it's not clear if anyone was injured. Now, this is a developing story, and we'll bring you the latest on air and online at KTVQ.com as details become available. Well, authorities have released the name of a 20-year-old motorcyclist killed late last night on the Billings West End. Police also asking for your help tonight to identify another motorcyclist possibly involved in that fatal crash. 20-year-old Paul Sherman was found dead on the 3600 block of Grand Avenue. A passerby saw Sherman lying on the ground on the roundabout and then saw the crashed motorcycle. Police say the incident happened about 1130 last night. Yellowstone County Assistant Coroner Rich Hoffman says Sherman died of multiple blunt force injuries. Billings police are now looking for a damaged candy apple green Kawasaki motorcycle. They believe that individual may know something about the wreck. Anyone with any information is asked to contact law enforcement. And a 95 year old Billings woman was also killed this morning after she ran a stop sign at the intersection of 17th Street West and Avenue E. Merrill Stansberry was injured when another vehicle heading north T-boned her car. Stansberry later died at the hospital. Another woman was taken to the hospital with what appeared to be non life threatening injuries. Billings police say the other driver was not at fault and there will be no citations. Another much anticipated homecoming for another victim of a, the Missoula road rage shooting in March. Casey Blanchard will return home tomorrow. He's been hospitalized in Salt Lake City since being shot after he exited his vehicle near Missoula to check on a motorist who he thought needed help. It'll be a big adjustment for Blanchard and his family. He's now a paraplegic. Montana Highway Patrol Trooper Wade Palmer was also shot, attempting to locate the same suspect who injured Blanchard, his mother, and killed Shelly Hayes. Trooper Palmer returned home from Salt Lake City last week. 25 years ago, a tragic school shooting in Butte took the life of an 11-year-old boy. But now the Margaret Leary Elementary School is turning this tragedy into a message of kindness. 11-year-old Jeremy Bullock was killed in April 1994 after being shot by a classmate. Today, the school held a fun run in Jeremy's honor. Jeremy's family was at the run, including his uncle, Montana Governor Steve Bullock. The Jeremy Bullock Foundation will be holding a safe school summit in Butte in August to address the issue of violence in schools. A Billings businessman pleaded not guilty today in federal court in New York to charges related to an alleged $43 million bank fraud scam. 47-year-old Todd Kapser was arrested and made an initial appearance in Billings earlier this month, but the case was moved to New York because one of the banks involved operates there. Now, Capser is accused of falsifying documents to obtain millions of dollars from a Canadian bank to buy two oil tankers. After falling behind on loan payments, Capser allegedly fabricated documents to get loans from nine different banks across the country. Now, Capser was released after posting a $100,000 bond. His travel is restricted to New York and Montana. His next court appearance is scheduled for Tuesday in New York. Yellowstone National Park officials say a visitor did the right thing when she photographed and reported another visitor who ventured well off the board uh, way, walk at uh, Grand Prismatic Spring. Now you can see a young man walk away from the spring across sensitive thermal areas before returning to the parking lot. The woman who took the video showed it along with a photo of the man and the license plate of his car to park rangers. They located the man and issued a $125 ticket. A park spokeswoman says the man could have fallen through that thin crust of the thermal basin and faced severe injuries or possibly even death. A judge has granted a temporary restraining order against Secretary of State Corey Stapleton in a battle over a bill. A month ago, Governor Steve Bullock vetoed a bill that changed the definition of wild bison in Montana. But the Secretary of State says that veto didn't count and that the bill has become law. Stapleton says the veto notification wasn't officially returned to his office until well past the 10-day deadline. The temporary restraining order requires Stapleton to remove House Bill 132, 
from the session laws on file, rescind the assignment of the chapter number, notify the code commission that he has taken the two actions, and to circulate the governor's veto message to lawmakers within the next five days. Well, tonight marks the 10th annual Legion Against Cancer Night at Dealer Park. It's a fundraiser put on by Billings American Legion baseball programs to raise money for Kelker's Kids. That's an organization that provides help for families of kids battling cancer and other life-altering illnesses. Q2's Casey Conlon is live at the ballpark tonight, joined by the event's organizer. Casey? Thanks, Russ and Janelle. I'm pretty glad that I get to wear these sunglasses this year. Last year it was rained out, but we have got a perfect night in store and the ballpark already looks good. Almost half full already as we look around with just tons going on. We're going to bring in event organizer Tammy Stacy. Tammy, come on over. She says she is a little camera shy, but we're going to make her get through this one. First of all, you have to be thrilled with how it's turned out so far. I'm very, very relieved, yes. Can you talk just about how wonderfully this program has gone in the years that you guys have been doing it with these Legion clubs it seems like it just grows and grows it just grows and every year there's a different story it's it's just amazing we were able earlier this week to talk about a story in sports about Ryan Newell you've seen firsthand so many stories like that can you say how much it's touched not only you but a lot of these players as well I think it's just touched the players, the families, there's been so many families every single year stories that I, I I had no idea we were going on, and I don't find out till this night. Right. What kind of night are you expecting here? I mean, we're already, like I said, tons of people here. We've got the Blue Jays and Cardinals playing. Still an hour and a half before the Royals and Scarlets, and it just seems to be more and more people coming in. I'm hoping that we're just completely full, and I'm expecting some a very emotional ceremony with the stories that I know that are coming up, and I just hope everyone enjoys it. Can you give us a rundown of the events before tonight's final game? Um, we'll do a ceremony and they'll introduce every single player and who they're playing for and they'll some of them have a little story that Bob will read like we I have two players that one's on the Blue Jays one's on the Royals and they're both playing for their mom who's fighting cancers and I didn't even know about that till the other day so that's an example of and you've got donation opportunities for people here, raffles, including one that's uh, uh, pretty big time, two tickets to a Rolling Stones concert in Chicago. It's tickets to the opening uh, rescheduled tour, so that's great. It's at the Fairmont. The hotel is included, plane tickets. There's a Cubs game on Saturday. We've got an autograph picture from Anthony Rizzo that's going to come to the winner. And there's a couple other little things. Right, so, awesome. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Tammy. We really hope it's a great night tonight. Thanks for joining us. We're going to be back here in sports in a little bit just to talk about a couple of sports-related items for Legion Against Cancer. But in the meantime, let's send it back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Casey. Well, turning to weather, we know crews are fighting a wildfire around I-90 in Carbon County near the Stillwater County line. Yeah. But, Bob, that's not where all this smoke is coming no, from. No, it's coming from Canada. And of course, the good news here today is that the, we do have thunder showers out there, but they're kind of going around the mountains. They're staying around the mountains, not coming into the Billings area. So I actually think kind of looking good tonight. But you can see here the smoke all continues to waft its way down through the high line heading in towards the Billings area. Now, let me show you as we zoom in. You can see there some of that smoke making its way a little bit farther to the south tonight. Now, here's what we have here. You can see we still have light to moderate smoke across most of southern Montana, but the really heavy and dense stuff, that's a little bit farther north up across the extreme. Highline up there in southern Canada. But as you'll notice here, our air quality here in the Billings area, it's just a little bit worse than good. Uh, elsewhere, we do have unhealthy conditions over there by Sealy Lake, Missoula, and also by Butte. In northern Wyoming, most of the air quality there is good. Anyway, we'll have your forecast for the weekend, which is also good, coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks so much, Bob. Well, smoke from very large wildfires that Bob just spoke about in Alberta can, can continue to drift across western Montana, causing air quality issues. More than two dozen fires are burning in Alberta. 10,000 people have been forced from their homes. The Chuck Egg Creek Fire in northern Alberta has burned some 568,000 acres so far. Air quality all across Montana is considered moderate. But in Sealy Lake and Helena, it's considered unhealthy for sensitive groups. Now, people with heart or lung disease, children and the elderly should limit any prolonged outdoor exertion. Coming up on tonight's 530 News, this animator spent 50 years bringing images of our childhood to life. And now he's paying a visit to Billings. Check out the art of Ron Campbell next.
You're watching MTN News with Janelle Slade and Russ Riesinger. Storm Tracker Weather with Bob McGuire and Sports with Scott Breen. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.